Hey guys, Josh Barnes here, and I am at the Ark Encounter in Williamstown, Kentucky. And this behind me is a life-size replica of the Ark of Noah's Day. They say it's the largest timber frame structure in the world. This is awesome. So we're going to go check it out right now. inside the Ark Encounter right now and this is amazing. You would not believe how big this boat is. It's built to the size and specifications that are given to us in the book of Genesis and it's amazing. Look at all this space. Here's all the ribs and screws here in the boat and you can see um, on the other side here All of this space, it just goes on and on, and they have uh, little containers for smaller animals. You can imagine how many small animals could fit in, um, in just this bottom section of the ark. It's gigantic. of the ark on the top floor and you could see the exhibit behind me can we trust the bible and that's really a good summary of what the entire message here is that i'm getting from the ark it's it's giant you can see behind me it's huge um and the whole message really is that it, it works the bible account fits with science and and reality and it works and uh, it, it's actually really really amazing if you like um, if you like the Bible explained you're going to love coming to the ark the, the whole thing is one giant explanation of the Bible I mean every single exhibit every single thing you're gonna love it here honestly it is it is really great and uh, we're gonna go on I think there's the next thing is a uh, zoo outside there's a there's an outdoor zoo and uh, then we're hopefully hope, hoping to get a glimpse of Ken Ham here. He's supposed to be speaking here today in just a moment. So we'll uh, we'll see if we can catch up.
miniaturas siniestras. How could I have a name be true? ¿Cómo puede ser verdad la verdad? I think we need a lot of God before we're dead and suffering. ¿Cómo te puede? the answer center right outside of the ark encounter and we just heard Ken Ham um, give a presentation here and um, really really neat talked about worldview and how the Bible has to be the basis for our worldview I think we're going to the zoo next So Answers in Genesis is the ministry that created the Ark Encounter. And we are now for about 40 miles north in Petersburg, uh, Kentucky. And this is a the first attraction that Answers in Genesis created. And this is the Creation Museum. We're here to interview co-founder of Answers in Genesis, Mark Loy, about uh, the ministry and uh, its importance in our world today. So follow me and we'll go check it out, see what he has to say. So I'm here at the Creation Museum with c the co-founder of Answers in Genesis. This is Mark Loy, right? I got the last name correct. Oh, people mangle my last <laughs> name all the time, so congratulations. <laughs> and this is such an honor. Thank you so much for, for meeting with me. And Mark, uh, Mr. Loy, I, I think I, that's better to call him Mr. Loy. He's got a ton of degrees in history, I think, actually, right? Yes. And uh, he's... He's an old friend of Ken Ham, and Answers in Genesis is the ministry that created the Ark Encounter and the Creation Museum, where we're at, where we're at right now. And Mark, I want to ask you, kind of, what is the goal of this ministry? What is what is the purpose, the driving force behind what you've done here? Well, Answers in Genesis is what's called an apologetics ministry, and I don't want that word apologetics to throw people off. Uh, it's a kind of a highfalutin term, and it has nothing to do with apologizing. Apologetics means we're giving a reasoned defense. It's a Greek word, defense of the Christian faith. So for the Christians who visit us at our Ark or Creation Museum in Northern Kentucky, we're giving them solid answers so they can defend their faith using science as well as scripture. And for the non-Christians who visit us or go under our website, watch our videos, we give them answers from the Bible to some of their most asked questions like, why do we have death and suffering and disease like COVID in this world if there's a God? So we answer the non-Christians' questions, but we also present them with the gospel message. So uh, we're not ashamed of the fact that we're very evangelistic in just about everything we do. That's so great. And you, of course, know that this is the type of thing we do at Point of View and at The Bible Explained as we try to answer a lot of the questions. And we have been unashamed about the fact that we use a lot of the research done by Answers in Genesis. So we really appreciate the ministry here. And when did this ministry start? How, how did this get going? And what was sort of the thought in your mind and in uh, Ken Ham and other people's minds when, when it was begun? Yeah, Answers in Genesis is just over 25 years old. Ken Ham and I and a third man, Mike Zobath, were all living in San Diego 26 years ago, thinking of starting a new apologetics ministry, one that would be at a layperson's level. So the flippant answer, Josh, the reason we moved to northern Kentucky and the Cincinnati area is we moved here for the weather from, <laughs> from San Diego. And most people, most people get that joke, but it's very simple that almost two thirds of Americans can drive 
to our Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area in one day. Now, most of your listeners are outside that 600 mile uh, mm -hmm. radius, but even people from New York City theoretically can drive here in a day, even Kansas City. So 190 million Americans can drive here in, uh, in one day. So that's why we chose this location. And to give you perspective from where we're at in New Hampshire, it took us about 14 hours worth of driving. We did it over two days, but it's very doable, very easy to get here. And an easy flight in. The airport is right. Yeah, the Cincinnati airport is actually not in Ohio, but it's in Kentucky. That throws everybody off. But <laughs> we're just two exits from the Cincinnati airport. So we're hearing of many people who are traveling, let's say, from the west coast to the east coast. They will do a layover here in Cincinnati for a day or two, visit our Ark Encounter and Creation Museum, and then continue on to, let's say, New York City or Boston. Yeah, exactly. So here's, here's one of the questions that I think a lot of even some Christian people will ask is why does it matter to take those first chapters of Genesis chapters 1 through 11 and why does it matter that those are taken literally um, so many people think well it doesn't really matter it doesn't affect salvation it doesn't affect other things would be the argument why would you say that this is really important well Josh I used to take that view that Genesis was a side issue and really wasn't important until you know, I was in a teenager and I was getting evolution in my public schools and uh, also in the museums and the media, I was starting to have doubts about the Christian faith I had just uh, embraced. And those doubts plague so many young people and uh, young teens uh, and young adults today. They think the Bible cannot be trusted mm -hmm. in our modern scientific age. And so doubts about the Bible can actually lead to people rejecting uh, the Christian faith. Yeah. Genesis is also important because it is foundational to the gospel message. Why do we have sin? Well, Adam and Eve rebelled in the garden. We've inherited their sin nature. So the gospel message is rooted in the historical narrative of, of Genesis. And another reason, Josh, is that many of the social issues of, of the day, these hot button issues that are being debated even within uh, state legislators and Supreme Courts and other uh, yeah. judicial uh, spots, are dealing with questions like abortion. Mm -hmm. And you can deal with that question as a Christian right there in Genesis chapter one. All of us were created in God's image. We are all image bearers of God. Also, we can deal with a topic of uh, racism. Genesis has, as you've seen in the Ark Encounter and right here at the Creation Museum, all of us go back to Noah and his sons and, and daughters-in-law and We've got many exhibits that show that all of us today, regardless of our skin shade, there's no black race, white race, all of us are a different shade of brown. If uh, Noah and his family had family members that had a very dark skin and some light skin, you can explain all the different skin shades uh, that we have today. And so the message of racial reconciliation can be dealt with uh, right there in the book of Genesis. And what's marriage? Where is marriage first instituted? It was in the book of Genesis. So the book of Genesis is very foundational to our, to our Christian doctrines. You, you put it away and say it's allegory or poetry, you're starting to undermine the Christian faith at that point. Yeah, and it sounds like it's not just foundational to our Christian doctrines, but also to our political atmosphere and what we're dealing with culturally in America. I mean, we're uh, here in Kentucky, not far from here, there have been riots very recently over here in Louisville and uh, over race issues and these types of things. Do you think that this, and you've already mentioned it, but you think that this has a, a very profound impact if people would trust and believe the Bible, especially the first 11 chapters of Genesis, it would make a difference in that area? Well, yeah, in, in topic of racism, we have people, by the way, coming from all over the world here. Uh, when you were at the Ark on Saturday, you probably saw, probably heard a lot of uh, Spanish being spoken. Mm -hmm. It was our uh, Dia Latino. We had hundreds and hundreds of people visiting us whose first language is Spanish and many of them have the darker skin. We've seen so many people come to our museum, the ARC, and also to our live events where we deal with the topic of racial reconciliation. People leave with tears in their eyes, especially people with very dark skin. They said they've never heard this message before. Mm. They thought that somehow they were in the evolutionary scheme of things. They perhaps were more closely related to an ape-like creature than Caucasians. Yeah. That's a message, unfortunately, that's still out there. Uh, Ken Ham and Dr. Charles Ware, 
uh, of Crossroads Bible College have written two books on this topic of racial rec reconciliation. So Answers in Genesis is more than just creation versus evolution. Many of the things that are in society today that are being debated have their answers in Genesis. Yeah. Hence, hence our name, Answers in answers Genesis. Answers in Genesis. And that's so good. And I think that a lot of people don't realize that it was Darwinianism that really started racism. And, and it was this idea that we, um, that uh, the white man evolved from a superior intelligent mon monkey and the, and the dark man evolved well, from Well, we a phrase it differently. Racism e existed before Darwin and his books, The Origin of Species and The Descent of Man. But what Darwin did was give a so-called scientific justification. Let me put that in quotes. For racism, uh, if you re I just wrote an article for our Answers magazine uh, on Darwin and racism, and even even Stephen Jay Gould, who who taught at Harvard, not too far from your your, yep. your station, he admitted this famous evolutionist that racism existed before Darwin, but it increased in orders of magnitude because of Darwinism. Darwin was a racist, and most of the people of his day were, but he gave a so-called scientific justification that that some people are more evolved than others, especially the Caucasians, as he would call that, as opposed to the dark-skinned dark savages, mm. is what he called them in, in South, uh, South America. So unfortunately, uh, we have that legacy that, that Darwin has left with us. I wish that more evolutionists would recognize that Darwin was a racist. Yeah, and so two quick questions before we go. Number one, we have a brand new uh, exhibit that we got to see, it's almost, christened, just christened right on Friday, and this is on the right to life and on the um, development of a child in the womb. My kids were absolutely fascinated to see a baby growing from, from one stage to the other, and were asking me questions like, do babies go to heaven if they die, and what happens, stuff like that. Tell us a little bit about that new exhibit. It, Brandon, it, it is stunning. There's nothing in the world, anything like this, in terms of its exquisite modeling as the baby develops from fertilization through, through nine months. Uh, you know, you could buy some of those models, baby models, off the shelf somewhere, but not the quality that we wanted. But here we are looking at the Supreme Court, another justice uh, mm -hmm. been nominated, and abortion yeah. is going to be a, a hot and heavy topic. And we want to present in a very tasteful and respectful way that life begins at fertilization. And if you look at the medicine, the medical knowledge, as well as scripture, you realize that that's, that's life that's developing in the mother's womb. I think it can be very powerful in uh, teaching people the origin of, uh, of human lives. But at the same time, we do it in a way that if someone has gone through a terrible miscarriage or has decided to do an abortion, we present a very loving message that, uh, that for those who have done the elective abortion, that God can forgive them. Yeah, and I think we're gonna show, uh, when you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, one of the plaques that says, does God still love me about um, if you've had an abortion? So last question, what's to come for uh, Answers in Genesis, the Creation Museum, Ark, Ark Encounter? Do you have new exhibits planned? What's, what's on the horizon? Yes, if, uh, you may have noticed that we have a brand new virtual reality experience at the Ark. Yes. Where you put on these goggles and you're ushered back to the time of uh, Noah. The big news, you'll have to call me back, Josh, in about uh, maybe six months. Okay. We have some major news to share with you. Meanwhile, we are expanding at the Ark Encounter. We have 800 acres there, right off of Interstate 75. And we're going to be building um, a, a village that might have been what Noah might have experienced you know, uh, uh, you know, almost 4, 000, over 4,000 years ago. We are expanding our zoo, so you'll see even more animals, which I'm sure your children enjoy the oh, animals. Yes. We have a yes. zoo behind, uh, behind the ark, and so we have seven phases in total at the ark encounter. We've only done two of them. So as, uh, as the finances come in and as the Lord blesses, more happening there. And then the big, big news will be announced here at the Creation Museum next year. Can you give us a hint? No. no. <laughs> I had to try. <laughs> I, I, you're a good journalist, but uh, no, but there's going to be more expansion here at the Creation Museum. I'll just leave it at that. Breaking news. In six months, there's a big, big announcement coming from Answers in Genesis. Thank oh, it might you. be seven months. It depends on, it depends on you know, we're, we've had a, uh, a very difficult time coming out of COVID where we had mm. to shut down our attractions for three months. And so our revenue this year is, uh, is, has suffered. Mm -hmm. And so we'll just have to... 
Now, as far as your attendance right now, where is it compared to where it normally would you be? You know, we are, we are blessed. Uh, most of the attractions that we've talked to are seeing maybe 40% or 50% of attendance versus previous year. We're running about 60%. Very, very few bus tours, Josh. People are reluctant about getting on a bus with, with other people. So the bus tours have not disappeared, but very, very few. We could have sometimes 50 buses uh, out at the ARC. Wow. And so that, that's taking a hit. And it may not be until March or April, that is after COVID, where we'll see bus tours returning. But on a good day, we can still see at the ARC maybe 4,000 people, which still pretty good number. That's incredible. That's really incredible. Well. Uh, Mr. Loy is a very busy man, and I, I want to thank you, Mark, for meeting with me, and I appreciate your time today. Well, thank you. I hope a number of your uh, uh, radio listeners and those watching on, online will make that 14-hour drive and come see us here. Everyone who's been here, Josh, even the evolutionists who don't agree with our message, they'll say this museum is the best-looking, most high-tech museum they've ever seen. So we take that as a great compliment. Absolutely, absolutely, and I can second that. It absolutely is. I've, I've been to the Smithsonian, I've been to all kinds of museums, and this is definitely one of, if not the, best put together museum I've ever been to. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. All right, come back with your kids uh, next year. We may have some more news for you. I will, I will. I have to find, I can't wait to find out what it is. Now, before I go, I want to sincerely thank you for watching this video. If you like this content, don't forget to hit subscribe to support the channel and to see more content like this. And follow The Bible Explained on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash The Bible Explained. I really do appreciate your support. Also, I want to remind you that the entire Bible is ultimately about one thing, the redemption of mankind by Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible teaches that all men are sinners and that no sinner can have eternal life with God in heaven because we must pay for our sins for eternity separated from God in hell. That's definitely bad news. But the Bible is all about this one thing, the good news that Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sin on the cross. Since your sin has been paid for by Christ, all that is left for you to do is to accept that gift by faith. If you've never accepted the gift of God by faith, won't you do that today? Leave a comment or send me a message, and I'll be happy to talk to you more about having your sins forgiven by Jesus Christ.